Hi Facebook, <laughs> here we are again, it is Tuesday, um, this is episode 4 of Randy's um, Dan Facebook live show, um, and it's nice to see you, um, or to be with you. Um, hi Sky, it, as usual we have um, Andrew as our trusty cameraman, also sound person, also PA, um, tech assistant. Um, you're doing a lot of jobs. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you are. <laughs> well, look at that. She's talking to me tonight. Um, and Skyler Faith, our audience of one. Okay. Skyler, did, did you put on makeup for tonight's performance? You look like you put on some. Wow. We're, okay. We are, yeah, you did. Yeah, you totally did. You did. We're, you did. Mm. We're kicking up this whole production a notch. I say this is the highest low tech. Uh, production that you're going to see tonight, but thanks for tuning in. Last night was really wonderful. We had um, people tuning in from um, all over Santa Fe, um, New Mexico, New Jersey, New York, Oklahoma, Mississippi. My neighbors across the street turned in, <laughs> tuned in. Um, uh, Japan. Okinawa. Uh, it's been, yeah. yeah, it's been pretty incredible. So we appreciate it, and it's been a really great way to connect. Um, keep my sanity so that I feel like I'm um, having some community. Um, and so basically what we're doing every night is we're, we're just talking a little bit about our day. I'm sharing a little bit of what we did and then I'm taking questions. Uh, I already have some questions from people tonight. And then we're checking in with a friend of mine um, and uh, who knows who it'll be or where they are um, and we're finding out how they're doing and then letting them sort of chat with us and entertain us a little bit or just kind of fill us in on what they're doing. Um, so each day I'm wearing a different t-shirt to represent something that means something to me, which is, if, if it's funny because I have a lot of t-shirts, um, but I'm, I am a yoga person, not super, super sporty. So, um, it's funny to be in t-shirts every night, um, but I'm happy to do it. So tonight my heart is in New York. This is my, I love New York t-shirt and I do and we do born and raised in Jersey lived in New York for two years um, 2004 to 2006 for a portion of that um, and I'm sad to see um, what's happening in New York um, our guest tonight I met while I was recording my first solo CD in um, second solo CD um, in New York uh, we met um, while I was recording in the basement of a brownstone thank you Jeff thank you Larry um, and uh, also tonight, um, my heart is with the Broadway community. It has been, um, you know, Broadway is dark right now and that's uh, shocking and sad. No shows happening right now. Um, but also because we lost um, a really important playwright, person, lover of life, uh, someone who made a difference and took a lot of chances in his work. Um, if you haven't heard the news, Terrence McNally passed and my heart goes out to his friends, his family, to Tom, all of his loved ones. Um, he was extraordinary. I had a chance to spend a very small amount of time with them um, a few years ago um, with my dear friend Judy uh, Shepard and, and they were wonderful um, and his legacy will live on but it, it's, a, it's a blow and it's sad. Um, the early reports are saying that it was um, possibly related to what's going on right now um, and it's just lost, you know, that's what it is. So my heart is in New York tonight um, as it has been. Please stay safe to all my friends and family. Um, so a little bit about what we did today. Um, Skylar was, Skylar was asking me too, um, like, why did we start this? Cause it's really weird. We're just going upstairs to mom's music room upstairs and we're doing like this show every night, every night. And she's like, why are we doing this? And I said, well, selfishly, it's because I want to, I want to connect with people that I miss and make sure they're okay. But also it's a way to sort of have community, you know, to reach out virtually. Um, so one of the things that people have done is like sent in some questions. So uh, one of them was, what did we do today? What did we do today? We did school today, right? We did school at kitchen table school, I call it. So we did school at the kitchen table. It's pouring here. It's raining in Nashville. It's been rainy, which doesn't help the whole get out and move your feet and, and change your mind, you know? Um, but we did gym in the garage. We hooked up a noodle. Thanks, Dad. That was brilliant. Very, very creative. Thank we did you. a noodle and Thank it you. served as a basketball hoop. So just, yeah. We, um, we had a science lesson from uh, Dr. Goffredi over at Occidental College. So that's pretty good. That's online classes. That's good. Somebody asked me about that. Actually, two people have asked me about that, how we're doing that. So we're using Zoom, which is you can get an app for it or you can just get it right on your computer. Um, Zoom is a great way to do that. And um, also you can uh, get, what's the other way you can do it? You can do um, FaceTime. 
You can do Google Hangout. Yeah, so that's ways to connect. Um, if you haven't done the virtual happy hour thing, it's fantastic. It's a way to connect hmm. with people um, from all over and just have sort of that face-to-face -face contact. Who knew that we were going to rely so heavily on sort of this digital media and seeing each other um, this way, but it feels really good to make those connections. Um, so that's kind of what we did today. Um, also, someone asked for my vegan uh, chili recipe. I'm totally on that. Um, it's really good. Lots of people left and they were like, oh, yum. No, it's good. It's really good and super spicy. Um, let me see if I can check in and see if anybody is saying anything. Oh, hi. Hi, people. Hi, Patrick. It's good to see you. It's hard for, it's hard for me to connect here because it's a little bit slower because we're running it three ways. High tech, low tech. Um, okay, questions. Um, recipe, I did that. Um, what was the other question? What's happening in, oh, right, since the tornadoes, right? So um, things here are, okay, we were running out of supplies before everybody else was, and I think that had a little bit to do with the tornadoes that happened in Nashville. Um, I'm not such a firm believer that people were hoarding because they were selfish. I, I honestly believe people were hoarding because they might have been scared or also because after the tornado, a lot of people needed things. They needed Lysol wipes and they needed paper towels and they needed cleaning supplies and whoop, when you know that's sort of all the things that we can't find now. So uh, Nashville is resilient though and um, our community is resilient and we're rebuilding and we're strong. So, um, so those are some of the questions. If you have more, send them in. Um, I'll be happy to answer them if I can. Oh, and um, what am I, am I drinking water? Someone asked if I was drinking water. Um, yesterday I was drinking apple juice. Are you drinking water, Sky? Skyler's drinking water. Yeah, but it's it's my house, so. <laughs> Last night was apple juice, but tonight is vino, so cheers. So be sure to grab something. Okay, um, hi, hi, Seth. Hi, Paul. Oh, and Las Vegas is here. Yay, somebody just yummed me. I don't know if that was for the vegan chili or the wine. <laughs> okay, so um, so we have a great guest tonight. Um, and his uh, name is Dave Egger, and he's a beautiful soul and a beautiful cellist. And I met him through another amazing soul named Larry Mitchell. Hi, Larry. I know you're out there. He's busy on Tuesdays doing his... A live event also you should check that out um, we recorded a CD called the play and um, some of my favorite songs in my whole career of doing music are on that CD and it's very special to me and um, I remember when he said well I'm gonna bring a, a, a cellist on we have a lot of amazing people on this CD um, that we did a while ago and uh, so I decided to bring a cello and the, the the great thing about Dave is that he is not just a cellist, he's an incredible musician and he does these phenomenal fun things with sound. So I'm lucky to have him over a ton of my CDs. And um, Andrew, you're laughing. What well, you yeah. About? Seth, he just said, I ordered $500 of wine today. Well done, <laughs> Seth. <laughs> okay, so... Um, I'm just, I'm not saying that. Um, anyway, so um, so this is a song from the Play CD. Whoop, whoop, what? And there are four out there somewhere. Um, it was on Amazon like a year ago for 99 cents. And I was insulted. But um, no, not really. I'm happy to have my music out there. Um, I have them. I have four. I think I have four or three. There, it's that one up there. It's the red one.
<laughs> Thanks for listening. That is uh, letting in the rain. Um, let's see if I have any other questions right now. Oh, Dana Lee, what is out there? The woman um, so very responsible for what matters um, being recorded for the first time. Hi, Colin. Pennsylvania is here. Oh my gosh. Hi, Christy. This is so awesome. It's, lo it's loading really slowly because we've got so many things going on here. So many things going on. Um, but it's so good to see you guys. Oh, we have a phone call. How about that? Here we go. Here we go. It's happening. Da -da 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 -da. Hey. Hey, Look at this. This is so amazing. Guys, this is my friend Dave Egger. Hi, Dave. Hi, guys. Hi, Willie. That was a second sound check. Hi. So, Hi, how's it going, everybody? Yes, it's, it's going good. So first of all, my friend, it's so good to see you, and thank you for checking in with us. Um, I want to start with... I was telling um, the Facebook audience a little bit of how I know you, which is obviously through Larry Mitchell and all those amazing gigs that we did um, in New York. But I'm, um, you're not in New York right now. Tell us a little bit about where, a couple things, where you are and, okay. um, and why you're there, for starters. <laughs> okay, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you great, hon. Huh? First of all, I just want to say I was totally crying when I was listening to your songs. So. Oh. Uh, I love your voice so much, and I used to, I played that song with you, and I was like, wow, you know, it's, it's such a beautiful thing, as, you know, we can't all connect in humanity right now, but connecting in this virtual realm, it's just so beautiful to hear a song like that, and, and just, oh my God, so moving. I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania right now. I was on tour with Rachel Sage, opening for Howard Jones, and wow. fortunately, and unfortunately, our tour was called off mm -hmm. at the night of the Pittsburgh show, and... I've worked here for the last 15 years as the music director of Attack Theater, which is the eminent dance company here in Pittsburgh, yeah. though I live in New York. And I just was like scared to go back to New York a little, and they were able to find me this lovely um, place to stay. And so I've just been here, and um, this city has been doing an incredible job of really looking out for its citizens. It shut down about 10 days ago. And Pittsburgh I did, yeah. Yeah. And, and actually, UPMC here in Pittsburgh, actually, they have their own testing going on. And so there's mm. been a tremendous amount of community support, even though obviously no one's seeing anybody, which is a little odd. Right. Um, no, but that's so I, important, right? And I mean, you must be checking in with New York, and they're hurting, so desperately. Yeah, I mean, I talk to my roommate there almost every day, and my really good friend, Dina, who you know. Yeah, Dina, you know, yeah. And so she and I were talking today. You know, everybody's really, you know, doing their job and isolating, which we have to do that in this past. Um, but also people are scared, and, and, you know, New York isn't a city that's used to feeling vulnerable or helpless. And so um, I think that, you know, this is a challenge for New York City. Hello. Agreed. Yeah, totally agreed. That's Skylar. That's Dave. Skylar. Oh, my God, Skylar. <laughs> oh. Um. Yeah, I know. See, it's been that long since we've played together. Wait. So what's really? Oh, I know. So wait. So this is something I wanted to talk about. So, um, Dave, I, I put a little blurb about you on Facebook today for the people who didn't know. I mean, they know you from your sounds on my CD, right? But. Um, yeah. I let them, you know, hear about all of the incredibly famous people that you've played with, and you can just Google him. He's played with everybody, Phil Phillips, and most recently Foreigner, and I mean, uh, Tony Bennett, his, it's unbelievable. Um, but, um, but he's played on my CDs, and what's been amazing was when I was recording in New York, I had the pleasure of having Dave play with me, uh, live shows, but most recently, for um, Glass Slipper, you played virtually. You were in another state. You laid your cello tracks down. They were arranged and edited through Noah, and um, Larry played on that same track too, and there we go, it was beautiful. But that's one of the things that musicians are able to do is that we can record virtually. But So how's that going for you? Do you think those opportunities will come up? Yeah, I mean, I, I quickly jumped to doing that when I was here because I was very scared to be kind of just alone all the time with no music to stimulate me. I am very much a collaborator. And so to me, you know, really working with songwriters, working with choreographers is the thing that makes me feel the most creative. So I have been lucky here. I was able to find an amazing engineer that we can just work at his house. And, you know, we're practicing social distancing and everything. Right. But his name right. is Stephen Foxbury. Uh, can you hear me? Or? No, you're great. Keep going. 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, you guys, there was a look of concern. On no, you're things. good. You're good. Um, but it's actually been, you know, it's always so much better to have the artists in the room because there's always an <laughs> empathic aspect to recording that's really about feeling the energetics of the song, the lyrics, the writer. But um, I do have to say that, uh, you know, I put out the first couple of days I was in isolation, I put out a call on Facebook and so many people sent me cool projects to work on. And I've worked on projects in France, projects in Italy, Woo! projects in the Philippines. And it's actually one of the beautiful things about this hard time is it's bringing me back in touch with friends of mine around the world that, you know, we all get busy and we don't follow up. But, you know, I was I was working last night on a track with an artist that I worked with a lot in the Philippines, um, 2012 and 13 when I was there a lot. Amazing. So it was really amazing to just reconnect and, and you know, you know, re-experience that. And, and um, it's been really special to, and to have that outlet as an artist right now. I it's think really that makes me... Yes. Yeah, no, I was going to say that makes me so happy, especially to hear um, you being able to do music globally in places like Italy that are hurting so much right now. You know, it's really, it, it, we need this. And I mean, there's so many things that we need. Music is one of them, but it makes me happy that you're able to connect in that way. So, you know. Yeah, it's been a real creative lifesaver. I mean, like every musician, pretty much everything that I have for the next, like, three to five months has all been canceled right. the live stuff. So, right. and you know, for good reasons, obviously, however, like, you know, for all of us that depend on that, that leaves a really difficult situation financially, but also creatively, because as performers, we thrive so much on the togetherness, but this idea that we can be together in this virtual environment and even finding time is kind of silly, but like we're talking now, but finding time to do actually FaceTime with friends. Right, right. And, Messaging has become really important. It's very, yes. very different. Yes. And messaging is kind of ironic and clever and this and that. But actually, um, me and one of my best friends just started, who's an amazing filmmaker in LA, we just started like, we're like, hey man, can we just hang out on the phone? Yes. Like, Isn't it crazy? Yeah, we're doing that too. <laughs> I know. A little silly, but I definitely watched my anxiety, which we all have a lot of anxiety right now, go down a lot. Yes. Just being like, oh, it's Mark and he's okay and he's in Los Angeles and I'm here and, and we're humans, yes. you know, so yes. I, I feel that, you know, that's, you know, reach out and, and and I think you just touched on something really important. Later on in the the week, I'm going to have a therapist friend of mine that's going to come in and talk a little bit about how to handle some of the anxiety that we're all feeling. And one of the things that we're saying is, it seems funny, but FaceTiming is different than texting. Seeing a person's body language and being able to connect on this level is different than texting. So I encourage you, if you want to text someone to check in, do the FaceTime thing if you're able to. Do the Zoom thing. Do the Google Hangout. Yeah, I totally agree. It's just it's just a way that, you know, we can look to the future and and remember our connectivity and, and be socially collaborative and and it's really important. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Okay, so now the big question that everyone is so we have people checking in from all over. It's so amazing. Like all over. When you're playing, I'm gonna check out uh, I'm gonna check in and see who's out there. But um would you would you play that beautiful instrument for us? Would you do that? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out whether the lighting's better. Like I don't have very good lighting. Oh. What do you like it open? Uh, what do we think? Is that okay? Can you try closed again? One more time? Close. Oh my gosh. Now Andrew is our lighting director too. He's doing a lot of things. I can do this, but this kind of, oh, that's horrible. Uh, oh, well, okay. Oh, that's oh, nice. That's I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I'll keep talking to myself. All right. So, uh, Randy, I'm actually going to play a sort of a little mashup. I'm going to start with Amazing Grace because it reminds me of my favorite song of yours. Oh. Aww. <laughs> and then I'm going to go into um, a little bit of Bach, if that's okay. That's uh, awesome. Bach prelude that you know Yo-Yo Ma used to say to me sometimes when I was able to take some lessons with him. It reminded him of like a peaceful water that we all kind of need some yes, of that. Yes, right we so, need a peaceful <laughs> water. All right, here we go. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
And I wish you could have um, go back on later and look at the comments. You were getting so many exploded hearts and wows, so it was awesome. <laughs> oh, God. And I'm getting so much. You know, I mean, it's so. I'm sure, Randy, you feel the same way. It's so hard. You know, there's an introverted part of us as artists, right. and nothing more than how we connect with people who listen to us. Right. So, it, you know, when people tune into something like this, it means the world to us because being heard is sort of the biggest part of being an artist. I think in a lot of ways. Right. 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 Yeah. So, um, so thank you for doing that, and I can't wait um, to play with you live again, now more than ever. I just, you know, I mean, I am so ready. I wanted to say this last night, but I, um, I forgot to, but I'm going to say it right now. Can you imagine the different way people are going to respond to live shows when this is over? Like, I truly believe, you know, if you talk to any musicians in your life, they will tell you that, you know, uh, it is... It, 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 a lot of people um, sometimes sometimes have a lot. It's very easy to get access to music right now. So um, sometimes it feels like, especially if you're like an indie artist, sometimes it feels like the thrill of live music has a little bit faded away. I don't think that's going to happen after this at all. I, I mean, right now, even just watching you through my computer screen, I'm thinking to myself, God, I can't wait to get on a stage with you again and just do what we do. And so I really think that um, you know we'll get we'll come through on the other side and it's going to be beautiful. So um, so please take care in Pittsburgh. I'm happy that you feel safe there. I'm happy that you're able to do music. Do you have a Patreon? Do you have a um, a PayPal? How can people find your music or maybe tip you out or do something if they're if they're able to? I always say it's oh, a rough time, sure. but I mean, um, you know I I should I, can I announce an online concert I'm doing? Is that okay? Of course it's okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. So on April 2nd through Facebook, um, again, my name's Dave Eggar, like scrambled egg, um, through the Believe in Bristol <laughs> series from Bristol, Tennessee, which is part of, you know, Rhythm and Roots Bristol, birthplace of country music. I am going to be doing a concert at 7 p.m. Um, it's going to be called Cello Songs, Songs of Hope. And it's going to be a lot of songs from around the world, kind of simple, like that all deal with hope, very lyrical kind of, you know, cello. I'm kind of just looking at how we all access that feeling. Um, so that's a kind of way to check me out. A lot of um, my project that I have with Chuck Palmer called Cellogram that we were touring opening for Evanescence and Lindsey Sterling a lot of last year, that's on Spotify. So Cellogram, like um, Instagram with a cello or Telegram with a cello, that's pretty easy to find. And we have some really cool tracks there, including a really cool track called All About Anna uh, with Amy Lee singing. Yay. And, hopefully we'll, and hopefully we'll do the Telegram track with Randy Driscoll. Yes, uh, it's, not, it's good. done deal, done deal. Okay, so, um, so, and I'll, I'm going to 
and after every week, I'm going to post everyone's information at the end of the week, too. Also, always understanding that everyone's having a hard time right now. So even if it's just a dollar, you can tip. It's accepted. Or even if, if it's just a compliment, that's a great tip, too. So um, so now what I'm going to do is every night um, I'm checking in. I'm doing the same three questions, okay? So here okay. we go. First of all, what do you find is the hardest part about this time of social uh, isolation and quarantine and distancing? I think just the unknowingness, like the sense that um, there's so much panic in the media and that we it's hard to know what information is correct and what isn't. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like sort of as awesome as it is being in a place like Pittsburgh, it's hard to feel like, oh, am I going home in three weeks, six months, mm -hmm. like next year? Yeah. So I think everybody's feeling that kind of anxiety of, of, of not knowing what next. And I think in the moments of isolation that are hard, I think that's sort of the confusing part is the, for me personally, sort of like type A side of my personality that's like, let's make a plan. Right. And kind of being like, no, let's not make a plan. Right. <laughs> totally. So, um, but I've been so lucky and I feel so supported um, just by my friends. And I think that's uh, been a real blessing. So I really have very little to complain about. In fact, uh, I just want to give a shout out. I have like I, a lot of my career has been in, in bluegrass and in the Appalachian region and like at least seven people offered to come pick me up here and house me. And, like, I'm so <laughs> moved here as I that's just, amazing. Like, that. Yeah, that's so, amazing. Country is a community. Like it's always such a beautiful community. And I'm just, I like, love that. Them. I love that. Okay. Yeah. Second question. Um, yeah. so that's the, wait, what did I ask the, wait, hardest thing. Yes. Okay. Now is the, yes. Yeah, so I, I was going to jump ahead to three. Okay. No. Two, second question is, what do you find the best part of this is? If there is a bright side or a silver lining for you, and it doesn't have to be super, you know, Pollyanna if you're not feeling that way, but to you, the best part. I feel like um, it's on an artistic level and also in the many talks I've had with my friends, everybody's really, you know, so honest and raw right now. It's really, yeah. I mean... Like all the little minutiae I've been worried about in my career just sort of all faded mm -hmm. away and getting back mm -hmm. to just like, mm -hmm. I love the cello, like it's beautiful. Like these really simple things. That yes. so it's yes. just the truth of those things are hitting me like so hard in a, in a really special way. And the same with my friendships, just feeling like, wow, again, the little like minutia of like, why does that person borrow my bow or, you know, right. things like that. <laughs> Are, you know, are going away in favor of just being like, wow, every, this person's been really special in my life. I need to just, like, get over it and stop sweating the small stuff. And I feel like a lot of people are doing that, and I think it's it's creating a lot of honesty right now, which I think is really, really special. So. Yeah, I agree. Okay, last question. Um, what, uh, and this is, you, you touched on this a little in the beginning, but what have you learned? What will you take away with you when this is all over, when we've come through this? What, what have you learned? Well, it's so hard. Um, I think, you know, um, really just not taking our basic freedoms for granted. I mean, um, the ways that we've sort of been entitled that we bracket, um, just, you know, having all of that kind of taken away is so powerful when you, you know, I just feel like I'm really going to try to be more present with all the little things in my life and really appreciate them more in the moment, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and um, I don't know, I feel like um, back to kind of what I said a little bit in question two, I mean, I feel like artistically, and I'm excited to see what you write during right, this period. Right, right. I'm challenging to do I want to Right, that. right. <laughs> um, but, you know, I feel like for me and my friends, especially as indie artists who've been kind of struggling, it's like, do we write this kind of song? Do we write that kind of song? What will this do? To get to a place like this where it's like, wow, I really just need to write what I need to write right now. Exactly. And, and I'm excited to see what that does for me and for all of the writers, songwriters that I love so much to work with. So I'm excited for that dimension artistically to see what comes out of it. So. Me too. Me too. All right, friend. Well, thank you so much for doing this. It's been great to see you, to hear you. Um, it was just really healing and much needed tonight. And I can't wait till we are on the same stage playing again. Um, and able to hug. I love you. I've loved you for a long time, and I'm, I'm glad that you're in my life. So please stay safe. Let us know when you get back to New York safely, and keep making beautiful music, okay? I love you dearly. Love you, Randy. Take okay. care of you guys. Okay, good night. Bye. Bye. Aww. So that was Dave Egger. Um, 
And, oh, I mean, truly, beautiful cello player, clearly a beautifully evolved musician. Um, he also um, gives lessons right now online, I forgot to mention that, um, which brings me to something I wanted to talk about. A lot of people are asking about lessons um, because people, not just musicians, but artists, um, anyone in their specific discipline um, is able to do um, lessons if they can find a way to do it virtually. So if you have questions about that, you can email me and I can tell you how I've been doing them for years. I've been doing them with, I have students all over the country, so I've been doing them for a long time, so I can let you know how I do that. Um, but um, we've had a really long relationship, and I remember Dave was the first person I ever saw stand and play a cello. He came to the show, and I had a chair set up for him the first time we ever played together live at the Cutting Room in New York City. And I, he came up on stage, and I had a little chair. And I was like, okay, that's where you'll go, and here's where Noah will be, and I'll be at the piano. And he was like, okay, uh, I won't need that. And I was like, oh, but no, what? And he was like, oh, yeah, I know, I'm going to stand. And I thought, whoa. And I was like, oh, he's like a rock star cellist, which he totally is. But um, anyway, so, whoo. I'm all sorts of emotional tonight, which I know is going to happen again. The rain has stopped, um, which could be a sign. I'm going to sign off with this song tonight for, um, for our loved ones that we miss, that I, we can't be with. Um, there are lots of people on my thread that are watching right now and that are t talking to me and texting that are separated for their loved ones, and they're either staying away because they want to keep them safe or they're just not able to get to that state or they're not able to get to that country. Um, and so I'm going to do a little something here. too, and we can check in and see how New York is doing. Love you. Take care. Bye-bye.